for me, it clicked here. It was 2013 and I clearly remember telling my friends that disco was coming back. I am that guy that likes to make predictions about trends just to see how aware I am of this crazy fast pace changing globe we live on. Then of course, in a few years time I'll end up knowing if I was right or not. In this case I was wrong. But in the right way. Disco never really came back, but some of the elements of it did, along with most of what we know from the years surrounding the 80s. Music videos emulating formats and resolutions used back then started popping out, and the pop music began to take a new shape on it. It is really evident to see how this serves as a tribute to many concepts and artists that were famous back then. And then collaborations involving influential artists as Kanye West and Chance the Rapper opened doors to new faces like Francis and the Lights. When I first played his song in a family trip, I asked my dad, who do you think is singing? He rapidly responded with, no doubt, Phil Collins. And I know it isn't him, but it sure sounds like. Well, Phil Collins was one of the lead singers of the very popular 80s band called Genesis. They were part of a huge music revolution involving world music, tight snares and electronic elements that were having their burst back then. Now take a look how similar this video clip for Invisible Touch is to the recent release by Electric S considering the overall circumstances. And now listen to the beat style that remembers the disco vibe. So I kept hearing 80 samples, tones and styles everywhere. I mean, take a blind listen to this Kimber track and tell me you couldn't picture a very flashy TV show. But then it came something new. The videos started having this new lighting design. And what I mean is, it was based a lot on strong neon lights, creating not only a lot of light contrast, but color contrast. It just became a huge fever, and you could see it was absolutely everywhere, from all sorts of genres in rock, pop, and even in hip-hop. This only shows how our taste can be affected by trends, and vice versa. So this got me thinking, what else from the 80s is actually coming back without us noticing it? The answer was, a lot. Searching about fashion and just paying attention to the streets, the 80s looks started showing a lot more often, mixed with other influences. And obviously, artists got into the trend. When this live concert from the 1975 came out, I freaked out. It was not about getting references anymore. This was straight up living in 80s clothing and sound. In the original clip for this song, you can see the concept I've just talked about, but many bands take it to another level on live performances. And then we also went through the rise and fall of an internet fever called Vaporwave. It is basically a style obsessed with the 80s and the beginning of the computer revolution. It is a very specific genre of music, but it revolves mainly around the aesthetics it proposes. For some reason, it didn't really persist that much. After a while, it got to a point where some people made 80s style remixes of current popular songs, and I have to admit some of them are actually quite good. Meanwhile, the one that I consider to be the most influential guy of the internet nowadays, Jimmy Fallon, has a show called where he exaggerates and satires the lifestyle of an 80s lookalike teenager and the relations she has with friends and life. Thinking about it, I realized that he is making this sort of content because it was part of his childhood, and he's now one of the people in charge of creating entertainment. Before him, people created things based on their own memories, and so we live on. As I edit this, I am living and working in a ski resort in Colorado, and I couldn't help but notice how much the 80s are alive around here. I think that it takes 30 years for trends to come back because both young kids that are rising in their careers now and college people from that decade that are now parents and business owners want to relive that part of their life. It is almost like forgetting things just so it can be as beautiful as it was when we first saw it. 
Hot Tub Time Machine is not much more than just an easy laugh, but it came out in 2010 and it serves to add to my point. Talking more about movies and series, it can't go unnoticed the fact that some huge content coming out now is based on information from the 80s. Recently released by Hulu, the series called The Handmaid's Tale is based on one of the most popular books written in modern times. It is a dystopian novel released in 1985, being a huge success back then. One of my current favorite directors released this movie called Neon Demon. In my opinion, is a beautiful work of art, not only in storytelling, but photography and overall design. You see, Nicholas Raffin has an eyesight problem that makes colors seem more plain or pale to him, so he sets his colors in a more comfortable way for him, which means that to a healthy eye, it turns to strong and flashy colors, which I honestly think it's just great, and it's part of his personal style. In 2014, Marvel screened the Guardians of the Galaxy's first movie, and even though their first appearance in comic books happened in 1969, they only had their own personal series at the beginning of the 90s, after Marvel realized the success that Star Trek was making in the late 80s. Peter Quill's life revolves on the fact that he escaped Earth after his mother's death, but before dying she left him a mixtape with her favorite tracks. They are all famous songs from the 70s and 80s, meaning the soundtrack very much shapes Star-Lord's personality, and consequently, the movie. But probably one of the greatest releases of the last years was Blade Runner 2049. The Ridley Scott 9082 original work is a masterpiece, and we all know why. But having a sequel made in 2017 was huge and the end product is no disappointment to the original. The sound and lighting design were perfect, recreating that cyberpunk feel and keeping the neo-noir vibe that conquered us at the first place. With a very philosophical and emotional plot, it comes to be in my recent favorites, for sure. Then last year, Netflix released what probably became the most viral web series of recent time, Stranger Things. I could go on and on into a billion of details of how the show got references from things in the 80s to create the series that also take place in the 80s, but honestly they are way too many and some people have already covered that perfectly. I'm not a huge fan of the series, but what matters for me is that the creators managed to deliver an incredibly well produced and successful series that got people romanticizing about living back in the 80s, being both those who didn't and those who actually did, like them. I believe that trends come to an end when they become just too popular or when people manage to reach its highest level of execution. That being said, I think the guys from Stranger Things were so dedicated that it kind of saturated this whole style. As creators, I think we need to be aware of the trends that surround us so we can keep up, but especially so we can diverge and develop our own view of what is catching the world's eye. As I mentioned before, people create entertainment based on their life experiences, and now I'm starting to see music styles and things from the 90s taking a new shape. Kendrick Lamar and Drake showed some 90s gangster rap in their latest albums, and I also think it's about time that punk and grunge take a new try in radio stations. Well, I'm a 90s kid, so that just might mean it's our turn to create content. And I've gotta say, I've got plenty of flannel shirts, and headbanging with this long hair surely is fun. Hello, peeps! Uh, I received direct messages on Instagram, and... Of course, people leaving comments here below telling me uh, how uh, how good the videos were and thanking me for, you know, the overall thing. And it's great. This is really good. Uh, it's nice to see that you're encouraging me to keep doing this and, you know, just keeping the community alive. Um, anyways, I love the criticism. The last video, a lot of people were correcting me or just telling me, um, you know, change this or... Uh, that would be better and it's really good it helps me to grow but especially the whole point of making these videos is learning um, and putting that out for you guys and I really have a good time so the criticism helps me a lot uh, but once again I just want to uh, put it out that some people were kind of rude 
and I don't really see the point about that. So try to make a good point, you know, like a criticism that actually helps me or makes me grow in any way. Uh, so yeah, um, so as I said, the 90s are back. Here I am wearing flannel shirts, long hair. Um, weird things are coming back, I'm not sure why, but still, it might be our turn as content makers to be out there. So keep an eye open, you know, develop your own style. And that is it, this is what this video is about. I hope you like it, crush that like button again, leave some comments below telling me what to do next and, you know, criticism overall. Let's just keep talking. Follow me on Instagram. Um, that's it. My name is Conrad and I make noises.